It's your brother, Larry Adenekon, welcoming you to the Really, Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of our God. Everything is being powered by the Pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Inspiration, the place. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We are sharing truths today on the effect of familiarity on leadership, coming from Luke chapter 10, 38 to the end of that chapter. Let's pray together and then right after that we go into it. Father, we bless your great name of God. You are good, your mercy is in there forever. Thank you for your help here all the time. Thank you for the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of you and of your son. We claim it again this morning, even in greater measure than at yesterday that lord as we go on to share with your people great grace will accompany that which we share in the name of jesus christ amen, amen. hallelujah okay then look 10 38 to the end something pretty familiar so we quickly read through it now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named martha welcomed him into her house and she had a sister called mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and as she approached him, and she approached Jesus and said, Lord, you do not care that do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good path which will not be taken away from her. Okay, praise God. Very familiar. They enter a certain place, and then as a woman called Martha welcomed him into her house. That suggests that of the two of them, Martha probably was the older of the older sister. Okay, because they, they refer to the place as her house. Right. Okay. So, but then the two of them must have been, uh, must have known the Lord, must have had some level of interaction with the Lord, level of familiarity with the Lord, uh, before she would invite him, you know, into her house and. Uh, uh, yes, there must have been some. It, it couldn't. It's not likely to be the very, very first time they met that uh, you know they invited. That there must be some relationship of some sort. Okay, so he went there. But I noticed something here. The disciples were not mentioned here at all. And so you ask yourself, did Jesus go alone, or was he invited? Was he you know invited singly? You know, aside his disciples, or he was the one who chose to go there solo? You know, oh, here was a place where. It was essentially two sisters that lived there. Okay, maybe they had a brother, but who wasn't really around much much time because you know it didn't feature here at all. Um, so he went solo to this place where uh, just two 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 ladies were, were living. And then you ask yourself the kind of question some people are going to ask today: Wasn't he afraid of being seduced? <laughs> you know, ah, you know the things we say. Oh, don't go to visit, uh, you know, some sister alone, especially these sisters who live alone. Don't go to their, you know, don't, don't go to visit them just you alone. Visiting them, you are subjecting yourself to a lot of temptation, you know, and all that. I'm sure you have all that, all that counsel before. You know, may God help us in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. But Jesus was the one who said the statement: "There are no twelve hours in the day. If therefore a man walks in the light, there's no occasion or." stumbling in him so he went on to um uh, to honor the invitation of this particular lady not caring you know some of the concerns or the people who go on about you know being seduced incidentally you know what i found out it is so funny that in in our time in our generation there's only women that know how to seduce pastors you know pastors don't seduce women <laughs> it doesn't happen the other way around always women are at fault all the time to my mind this thing looks to me like uh, one of those tropes you know one of those things that this anti-women thing is there it's uh, somewhere in the subconscious it is uh, not often spoken out but it is implied you know women are the ones they are the ones that have all the problem they are the ones that seduce pastors they are the ones that do this they are the ones that do that men don't seduce anybody no those pastors they don't have weaknesses no it's only these women that honestly be fair <laughs> god help us in jesus man just be fair the the, the 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 devil can use anybody he can use you know the, the big man he can use the the big woman or the small woman as the case may be may god help us in jesus mighty name all right then so let's go on okay then uh so the bible went on and said that uh, so they welcomed him and they had a sister called mary who sat at jesus and had the word but Martha was distracted with much serving and then let's talk about distraction here 
Now, since the matter was distracted with, with much serving, in other words, it was not as if she did not listen at all. It was just that she would listen a bit and do some other thing. He would listen a bit and do so. He was distracted. Okay, then let's go on. We should understand that. Uh, because you see, we, 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 if you notice the story in the book of John, you know that even Martha, despite the way we look at her, was somebody that had quite a bit of revelation, you know, from the Lord Jesus Christ. So she was distracted, not as if she didn't listen at all. Then let's go on. Then Martha now approached Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone therefore tell her to help me and i see something there some dimension of familiarity was there number one this was the teacher this was the lord and master uh martha went to him ah, lord don't you care that my my, my sister is not is not uh, helping me mm, you talk to your general overseer that way <laughs> praise the lord you know that's the way matter spoke it means that there was some measure of familiarity they were familiar they um they were friendly it, it was it was a you know um yes that familiar is just the word a very very informal very very casual kind of relationship and say ah lord don't you see that okay now then she went on to tell jesus what to do did you hear did you just hear me <laughs> she went on to tell jesus what to do do you tell your overseer your general overseer what to do he says tell her to come and <laughs> tell her to come and help me she told jesus what to do amazing Amazing, isn't it? That the, the sort of dimension of familiarity. Like I was teaching uh, one of the, our better days ahead some months back. That level of familiarity. Jesus didn't seem to mind it. That's why you notice that you know he could visit Peter's mother-in-law, the mother of James and John could come to him. He gave these people a lot of nicknames and things like that. He, he didn't mind it. In actual fact, it's better in your leadership because you see the people will know that you genuinely love them, you genuinely care about them. You're not just a, a, a leader, that's in a, a general, a war general that is commanding, you know, and um, um, you, you obey the last order. Whatever you say must be obeyed and all that. Yeah. It's See leadership but you see this kind of leadership is the one that comes down you know and um, he is able to mix with them intermingle with them and he can relate to the high and the low and uh, he can relate cross class you know that's what jesus did and um, these people they were very very familiar and they, it she told jesus what to do amazing you know just imagine that honestly yeah yeah it's it's and it jesus didn't mind it he actually liked it and he helped him to reach the people better because they knew they he had their genuine interest at heart it wasn't just there up 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 on the pulpit and you are far 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 somewhere in the crowd there and you are just unknown and the man of god just speaks you know and we have to obey because you know daddy has spoken you know that kind of that's what that was not the kind of thing that happened here he had a relatable leadership a genuine leadership a parenting kind of leadership honestly and and a friendly kind of leadership that's why he calls he says that called you friends and that's why i can tell you what i'm doing that's what he said to the disciples praise the lord so i like that and it's jesus type of leadership and that's what we should go for okay then jesus said to her martha martha you are worried and troubled about many things only one thing is needed and it will not be taken from her you are worried and troubled about the cares now jesus spoke about cares of life in luke uh chapter 8 spoke about luke cares of life in mark chapter 4 <clears throat> um and some other places like that that look there is a way these cares and these uh, things can encumber one okay it can really clog you know uh, the wheel of progress and you know and things that you want to do it can do that he says but mary has chosen that one important thing before i go on there there's something i omitted that you just quickly say it in a sentence or two we have two sisters the same parents but two different temperaments here you can see the the martha is the um extroverted one outgoing you know does the other one is, is quiet and reserved and all that yes two temperaments respect each person's temperament each person's nature is not because the person is dull it's not because the person can does not want to relate okay that's just her own temperament that's just his own temperament try and understand and make the best of it you know as much as possible finally this morning he says mary has chosen the one good part hallelujah that one good part is the word one thing that we all need is the word the needful thing as distinct from what we want what we need we need that one thing the word and jesus said somewhere he says therefore he says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of god honestly if you live by the word of god 
<laughs> Many other things that you need to live by, they are already embedded in what the Word of God reveals to us. Hallelujah. Every other thing you need for this life that pertains to life and godliness, all of them are embedded in what the Word will reveal to us. Therefore, you get the Word. Amen. And uh, somebody was illustrating sometime. He says, look, um, <clears throat> you are quarreling with... Um, puppets that these puppets are irritating they are irritating they are jumping up and down jumping up and down and so you want to cut a string you know from one of cut the string off so that at least if you cut a string off the other four will trouble you okay you cut the second string the other three will trouble you if you cut it the other two still remain but if you cut the hand then all the puppets are gone once for all that's it because you see the word is is the one that has all the puppets honestly so if you are able to get that word every other thing that the that is hanging upon the word shall be your portion that's why jesus says the one thing that you need is the word because inside the word from inside the word every other thing that you would possibly need on you know begin to get or acquire whatever the word will reveal to you i spent so much time this morning a little bit of our time but please bear with me and um uh, thank you for bearing with me. Yeah, just thank you for bearing with me. Thank you very, very much. Um, I believe some people think it's already weekend. Let me say, thank God it's Friday. God bless you. <laughs>